friends, welcome to Sunday Mass with Children. We are so glad that you can join us on this adventure to learn more about our faith. This week, we celebrate the second Sunday of Advent. Advent helps us to focus on Jesus, the light of the world. Hi, kids! Thank you for sharing your amazing artwork with us week after week on Little Faith Steps. The entries from our local and international friends are colourful and inspiring. We are always encouraged by your sharings and beautiful artwork. Keep them coming. Remember what we learned last week on the different names of Jesus? This week, we are going to learn more about Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Let us first light the candle on the Advent wreath and begin with a prayer and a song to Jesus. The Advent wreath reminds us that the light of Christ is coming into the world. As the light gets brighter every week, we wait with great hope for Jesus, the light, who will shine through the darkness at Christmas. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Jesus, Prince of Peace, we ask for your forgiveness for the times that we have not been peaceful children. Fill our hearts with your peace. Guide us to grow in faith and love, and be examples of peace through our words and actions. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us sing a song to Jesus, the light of the world, and ask Him to shine His light all over the earth. The world is searching for an answer, a ray of hope in a hopeless world. Who can we turn to? Where is our rescue? There is someone, he's the answer, he's the light and the light the way. His name is Jesus, he came to save us. He is the light. Light of the world and he 
shines, shines, shines All over the earth shining bright, bright, bright He is the light of the world Hi kids and welcome back! Are you ready to listen to the Word of God? Awesome! In John chapter 14, verse 27, Jesus said to his disciples, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. Jesus was talking to his disciples shortly before he was crucified. He knew they would be scared. He didn't promise his disciples a peaceful, easy life, but he did promise them a spirit of peace. Like the disciples, there may be times when we face difficulties or are afraid, but Jesus promises us that he will be there for us no matter what happens. He is our peace, a peace that the world cannot give. Let's find out what John and his friends are learning about peace. John, we can't play catching if you don't catch us. Sorry, I don't feel like playing. My best friend Alex is moving to Australia with his family. I haven't spoken to him since he told me about it three weeks ago. Why do you look more angry than sad? I guess I'm angry at Alex because I won't have my best friend anymore and I can't do anything about it. Sounds like you need to make peace with Alex. My mother said if we do not have peace in our hearts, we will feel upset for a long time. But it's hard to make peace when I feel angry and hurt. Oh, I also remember my teacher telling us that we often can't find peace on our own. But if we turn to Jesus, He can help us find peace in our hearts. But how? Ask Jesus when you pray. Do you agree with Sabine and Noah that John should try and make peace with Alex? Remember the Beatitude in Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Jesus tells us that if we want to live as happy children of God, then we must make peace. I wonder what happened to John and his best friend in the end. Let's find out. John, you're still not catching us. What's that? Sorry, I couldn't wait to read the letter from Alex. He's written back to me. So you made peace with Alex? Yes, I prayed for a few days, asking Jesus to give me peace. And I finally called Alex and wished him all the best before he left. We promised to keep in touch. That's great. So are you peaceful enough now to play catching? Caught you. John learned that he had to welcome Jesus, the Prince of Peace, into his heart. But before we can give peace, we must have peace. Where can we find this peace? This peace can only be found in Jesus. He came to save us from our sins, to make peace between God our Father and us. Let us now listen to a story of a saint who found peace in Jesus. Try to keep your soul always in peace and quiet always ready for whatever our Lord may wish to work in you. This was what St. Ignatius of Loyola wrote in a letter to his friend. Before Ignatius encountered Jesus, there was no peace in his life. He used to indulge in many bad habits. He fought in a war to achieve his dream of becoming a knight, but a bullet badly injured his leg, so he was bedridden in a castle for a long time while recovering. In there, there was nothing else to do except read the only books he received. A book on the life of Christ and a book with stories of the saints. After Ignatius read them, he felt a joy that never went away. Prayer also gave him peace and his prayer time led him to create spiritual exercises that helps people listen to God. With his new way of life, he inspired his friends to love Jesus just as he did. These friends include St. Francis Xavier, who joined him in forming the Society of Jesus, also known as the Jesuits. Today, the words of St. Ignatius of Loyola still guide the Jesuits in helping people to experience peace through prayer. 
St. Ignatius of Loyola showed us how we can experience peace through prayer. With the peace of Jesus, we will then be ready to do what He asks of us. Let us ask Him to reign in us, especially in our darkest hour. For this week's activity, go to our Facebook page, Little Faith Steps. Like our page and share your works in the comment section with us. This week, spend some time with Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament to receive His peace. And think of how you can be a bearer of peace to others. Oh, and don't forget to use the Advent calendar to guide you on your Advent journey. It is now time to set up your altar table and prepare for Holy Mass. Take a moment now to get these items and see you in a while. Oh, don't forget to take a photo and post it on Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag Catholic Mars at home. Let us now listen to what Auntie Estella has to share with us in one Mass minute. We often think that Advent prepares us for the birth of baby Jesus, who came to earth to be with us 2,000 years ago. But if you listen carefully to the Mass readings, you'll hear about another arrival of Jesus. Do you remember that 40 days after Jesus rose from the dead, He ascended to heaven to be with His Father? Two angels told His friends that one day He would come back. In today's Mass, St. Peter tells us that we don't know when this will happen, but this new kingdom will be wonderful and perfect. As we say in the Creed, his kingdom will have no end. Jesus loves us so much that he does not want us to feel lost and alone without him until his return in the flesh. And so he comes to us at every Mass in the form of the bread and wine. Do you remember the moment when this happens? When Father prays, This is my body, this is my blood. Thank you, Auntie Estella. Let us now settle down, sit in front of your altar table, take a moment to be silent and prepare for Holy Mass. Welcome, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to the Holy Mass with children. Thank you for joining us to sing songs of praise and to learn more about Jesus, the Prince of Peace. There is nothing like giving God our hands and our voices to worship Him as our loving Father. Let us now worship the Lord together on this second Sunday of Advent, 6 December 2020. We offer up this Mass for all children that they may be messengers of the good news of God's incredible love. Join us in singing the processional hymn.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Light and peace in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is the second Sunday of Advent, the Sunday of peace. Our peace is found in God and in His Son, Jesus Christ. John the Baptist and all the prophets remind us that to receive peace, we must be prepared for it. Let us pray, O God of peace, Emmanuel, we pray to you to send your light into our hearts at this time. Help us to be ready for the day and the hour of Christ's appearing. Work in our hearts at this time and help us to prepare ourselves for the peace that he brings, the inner peace that tells us that we are united with you and the outer peace which will come when he returns to judge the world. Bless our worship that may be pleasing unto you and bless us that we may prove to be your faithful servants. Amen. And we light the second candle today to remind us that Christ is the Prince of Peace, the one promised from the beginning of the world. We thank God for the hope he gives us and for the peace he bestows. May he come quickly and not delay. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So as I light the candle, maybe those of you at home, you may also want to light the second candle in your Advent wreath. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, as we come to celebrate this Eucharist, as we come to encounter the Lord in the Word and the Sacrament, let us call to mind the times that we have failed to love, and let us prepare our hearts to receive Christ. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. This being the season of Advent, there won't be the Gloria, and so let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom give us admittance to his company. He who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Console my people, console them, says your God. Speak to the heart of Jerusalem and call to her that her time of service is ended, that her sin is atoned for, that she has received from the hand of the Lord double punishment for all her crimes. A voice cries, prepare in the wilderness a way for the Lord. Make a strict highway for our God across the desert. 
Let every valley be filled in, every mountain and hill be laid low. Let every cliff become a plain, and the ridges a valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all mankind shall see it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up on the high mountain, joyful messenger to Zion. Shout to the loud voice, joyful messenger to Jerusalem. Shout without fear. Say to the towns of Judah, Here is your God. Here is the Lord, coming with power, his arms subduing all things to him. The price of his victory is with him. His trophies all go before him. He is like a shepherd feeding his flock, gathering lambs in his arms, holding them against his breast, and leading to the rest the mother ewes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and give us your saving help. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and give us your saving help. I will hear what the Lord God has to say a voice that speaks of peace is for his people his help is near for those who fear him and his glory will dwell in our land let us see and peace have embraced faithfulness shall spring from the earth and justice look down from heaven let us see of St. Peter. There is one thing, my friends, that you must never forget, that with the Lord, a day can mean a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord is not being slow to carry out his promises, as anybody else might be called slow, but he is being patient with you all, wanting nobody to be lost and everybody to be brought to change his ways. The day of the God will come like a thief, and then, with a roar, the sky will vanish, the elements will catch fire and fall apart, the earth and all that it contains will be burnt up. Since everything is coming to an end like this, you should be living holy and saintly lives while you wait and long for the day of God to come when the sky will dissolve in flames and the elements melt in the heat. What we are waiting for is what he promised, the new heavens and new earth, the place where righteousness will be at home. So then, my friends, 
while you are waiting. Do your best to live lives without spot or stain, so that he will find you at peace. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is written in the book of the prophet Isaiah. Look, I am going to send my messenger before you. He will prepare your way. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare a way for the Lord. Make his path straight. And so it was that John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. All Judea and all the people of Jerusalem made their way to him. And as they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, they confessed their sins. John wore a garment of camel skin, and he lived on locusts and wild honey. In the course of his preaching, he said, Someone is following me, someone who is more powerful than I am, and I am not fit to kneel down and undo the strap of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, how many of you watch the children's TV show Sesame Street? I'm not sure whether the kids these days watch it. I know maybe the parents who are watching this, this was uh, your era. Sesame Street, that children's show with Jesus, Elmo, Big Bird, I always had this topic of the day, right? They will always tell us, today's Sesame Street is brought to you by the letters, a certain letter and a certain number. Well, today's readings are brought to us by a certain letter, the letter P and the number 3. Three words with the letter P have been repeated over and over again. Do you know? what the three letters are. Of course, the first letter is peace. We lit the candle, the second candle in the Advent wreath, the candle of peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And in the readings, it talks about waiting for that peace to come. And the second letter, the second word that begins with the letter P is patience. In the second reading, we hear about how we are called to wait with patience. And it's not just us that is being patient, but God is being patient with us. Last week, the first Sunday of Advent, the readings about staying awake and waiting. And waiting and waiting. Right, Many of us are waiting for this whole COVID to be over, waiting so that life can go back to normal. How long must we wait? Maybe in our waiting, we are losing our patience. But it's an invitation to remember, of course, part of waiting is patience. But more than just our patience, God is being patient with us. God is being patient because He's waiting for us 
even more than we may be waiting for Him. He is waiting for us to return to Him, waiting that we may return to His ways. And so in the reading, it talks about how a day can seem like years. Maybe even this year may seem like a day for some of us has gone by so fast, or some of us may feel that this year has gone by super slowly. But this patience that we are called to have is not just a waiting without hope. And that was last week's theme, right? The candle of hope that we lit. This patience that we have is because we have that hope that Christ will come, that God will reign supreme, that He will take care of everything if we trust. And so the second reading ends off, it says, My friends, while you are waiting, do your best to live lives without spot or stain so that He will find you at peace. And so with this patience that we are called to live, it is not patience and doing nothing, but a patience which leads us to the third word with the letter P, prepare. We hear this word prepare so many times in the readings. In the gospel acclamation we had, prepare a way for the Lord, make his path straight. This line is repeated in the first reading in our gospel also. The gospel passage about preparing. John the Baptist is that messenger that was sent to prepare the way for Christ. And so this whole season of Advent it's about that longing, that waiting for the coming, but it's a time for us to prepare. How are you preparing to celebrate Christmas? How are you preparing to allow the Lord to enter into your life? I know this year's Christmas seems to be very subdued. This year's Christmas, you know, we can't hold big parties, we can't go visiting, we're supposed to be staying right, having our social distancing to prevent a bigger spread. And that's the responsible thing to do. We do not want a new wave, right? We're waiting patiently for at least phase three to begin. So how then can we prepare to celebrate Christmas? And maybe actually this year's Christmas might be something even more special. There was a priest in the US who wrote, uh, a very nice uh, reflection on this. Too often we have Christmases which are so busy, shopping, going to see the lights, right? Maybe some of us are always flying away during the holidays. But this Christmas is a Christmas more like what Christ went through, the actual birthday. He didn't have all this glamour, glitz, presents, parties. But what did he have? His was a simple birth. And maybe this is a time for us to prepare for that simple celebration, the true meaning of Christmas. And so let us take this week to think about how am I preparing to celebrate Christmas this year? What is the essence of Christmas that cannot be missed out, even though we cannot have our parties, even though we may you not know, have these big celebrations. But what is that real preparation? The preparation of our hearts. And usually in this time, we will have our penitential services where we go for our confession. Many parishes are having the penitential services in small ways. Right, if you make an appointment to, uh, to depends on your parish, to go to the priest for confession, that is one way that you can do. But more importantly, how are you as a family preparing? Preparing to celebrate the Christmas, which is not as simple, or actually simpler, or not as uh, elaborate as the years before. 
But one more way of preparing that I want to share with you and challenge you today. A lot of times when we talk about preparing for Christmas, about preparing our hearts, it's about us preparing for Christ to come into our lives. But if we look at John the Baptist, John the Baptist's story, he was not preparing himself to meet Christ. What was he doing? He was that messenger sent to prepare others. He was the messenger to tell others, I'm nothing. I'm not even worthy to undo the sandal of the one who's coming after me. But he went to share that good news with others. He went to prepare others so that they too may come to encounter God. Encounter this Prince of Peace. And so maybe the invitation for us this year is how can I prepare others? How can I in this time of waiting, what can I do with my friends, with my family? Maybe those of us have, you know, family members who still are, have not come to hear the good news of Jesus. Are you able to share that story? Are you able to share how good God is for you? He is the wonderful present that God the Father has given to us. What has He done for you? And how can you share that with others? How can you share that, especially in this time when people might be struggling with loneliness, struggling because of the loss of jobs, right? How can you reach out to them to send uh, a simple message of peace. To pray, you know, for others that they may experience the peace that you have received from Christ. And so let us not just prepare ourselves, but to recognize that God is sending us, just like John the Baptist, to go out and prepare others. As we prepare to celebrate this Eucharist, we remind ourselves that God became man to become one of us so that he can show us the way into that life of peace. So my brothers and sisters, I invite you to think about it as we celebrate this Eucharist and even after that, think about how you can prepare yourself as well as others to come to celebrate the true meaning, the true gift of Christ this Christmas. Amen. And so having heard the word of God, let us respond by professing our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
With confidence in the God who always hears us, let us offer our prayers and petitions to the Father. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Archbishop William, all priests and clergy, that they may be shining examples for everyone to prepare a straight path for the Lord this Advent season. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that they may work together to promote greater peace and justice in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may prepare for the new heaven and the new earth by fostering respect and protection for all human life, including the unborn. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations, that all those chosen by Christ prepare the way of the Lord in their hearts and the hearts of his people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have separated themselves from the grace of God, that they may find in this season the time for reconciliation and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions we hold silently in our hearts, and those who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, you are kind and merciful. We ask your blessings on us as we present our needs and renew our faith in you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For He assumed at His first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when He comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. 
and so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of our holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which shall be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and William our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And so we celebrate this Sunday of peace. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace with you. Behold Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. So for those of you at home, as you prepare to receive this spiritual communion, I invite you to pray and ask the Lord to prepare your hearts, not just to receive Him, but that you, He may help you prepare to reach out to others so that others may be prepared to receive Him. We invite all those watching to make an act of spiritual communion with a spirit of gratefulness, thanking God for His infinite love and sacrifice. With humble and contrite hearts, let us express our desire to invite Jesus into our souls. My Jesus, I believe that You are present in the most holy sacrament. I love You above all all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. After each invocation, you respond, Amen. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. And as you run the race of this present life, may he, find, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to prepare yourselves to receive the Lord and that you may prepare others to encounter Him too. Thanks be to God. Perhaps uh, what they said, positive laws. Positive laws are human laws uh, that say you have to do this. The precepts of the church are set in the context of a moral life bound to and nourished by liturgical life. So the way you pray, your spirituality is all tied to this. And so the first precept, Catholics should attend Sunday Mass where possible. The Mass is the principal form of worship where the community gathers, the church gathers, and there we worship God, the Father, in the sacrifice of Christ, uh, in unity of the Holy Spirit. So there we renew our identity as a child of God, renew what it means to be Catholic, and we continue to rely on Christ to sustain and nourish the life of the church. The second precept is to confess one's sins minimum once a year. The gospel calls for a continual conversion to encounter God, but also to recognize with humility our own brokenness. The priest is not there to judge you as a human person. He's there to mediate. It is in this sacrament that we celebrate God's mercy in our life. The third precept is the Easter duty. It's a reminder that at the minimum, we should receive the Eucharist at least once a year. If you go for daily Mass, by all means, receive Christ every day. What the Eucharist recalls is the breaking of bread, which Christ gave at the Last Supper. 
and he says, do this in memory of me. Now, he journeys with us in very tangible form, not in wishful thinking, but in bread and wine, things that we can touch and see and taste and consume. The fourth precept is about fasting and abstinence. The Bishop's Conference said that Fridays should remain a day of penance, reminding ourselves that Christ died on Good Friday, to pause and to rethink the things that we want to do, the things that we want to have, are they necessary? The point of this corporate fasting and abstinence is to exercise an element of self-denial, whether it, it be uh, computer games, whether it's television, Netflix. Be creative in what you want to give up for this day in honour of the Lord. And the fifth precept, the church invites us to provide for the needs of the Catholic Church. Out of our baptism arises certain obligation on our part to make sure that the church, you and I included, continue to fulfil its apostolate. We invite them to be generous to the degree that they're able to. But more importantly, to feel that they want the church to develop, to grow, and to fulfil its mission in Singapore as a Singapore church. And that's where the sense of belonging, the sense of ownership that's important in the fifth precept. So the church takes it on herself to say, these are the five things that you should do for the good of your moral life. So the requirement for going for Mass is tied to your spiritual life. The requirement to go for confession is also tied to your spiritual life. Each one is asked to take responsibility for his or her spiritual life also and to continue on this path of conversion.